Welcome to footballgameplan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, bring you our 2011 Big Ten Conference preview. Now, there's a new addition to the Big Ten this year with the Nebraska Cornhuskers joining the fray, which should make an already tough conference even tougher. So let's start this video by checking out the recruiting trail to see how well these teams did this past offseason. Top recruiting class in the Big Ten, you have to go with the Ohio State Buckeyes. Look at this class, top to bottom, they rebuilt their depth on the offensive line and defensive line. That's how the rich stay richer, but the headliner of this class is quarterback Braxton Miller. This guy's going to make Ohio State fans forget Terrell Pryor. He's more of a polished type. This guy can throw the football out of the pocket, also has breakneck speed, so he can get outside the pocket as well, create plays with his legs. But he looked impressive in the spring, so this guy may actually get to start this season for the Ohio State Buckeyes in the absence of Terrell Pryor. Some other key recruits in the Big Ten. You look at Michigan's defensive lineman Brennan Bayer, a terror off the edge. This guy brings a lot of speed to the position and should help out their Wolverines front four. You look at the University of Minnesota snagging G. Sean Harris. This guy is a mismatch waiting to happen, catches everything with his hands, and has a lot of speed to take it a distance. Michigan State snagged an outstanding linebacker, and Lawrence Thomas, this guy has outstanding hands, excels in the pass game, and is a ferocious tackler. Nebraska going with the running back Aaron Green. This guy has tremendous footwork and outstanding vision. Should prove to be a tremendous talent in the Huskers' backfield. Northwestern snagged another talented wide receiver in Christian Jones. This guy had offers from all over the country, but he probably will start as a true freshman. You look at Penn State getting offensive lineman right there on the left. Donovan Smith should help bolster the offensive line unit, and it has a nasty streak that you want out of your offensive lineman. Do got themselves one of the top tight ends in the country. Robert Cugler should start as a true freshman. 6'3", 250 should help bolster that ball and makers passing game. Now you look at the Wisconsin Badgers getting Uber's talented linebacker Jake Kiefer. This guy flies all over the field, knows how to make tackles. Very smart, athletic linebacker. Rodney Coe is a guy I really like. This guy runs with a mean streak. He runs with a purpose. Iowa got themselves a true beast in the backfield. Now you look at Indiana getting another true freshman quarterback. Trey Robertson probably will start for the for the uh, Hoosiers. Should prove to be a tremendous talent. You look at Illinois snagging John Davis. This guy is probably going to play tight end for the Illini and will probably start again as a true freshman. Some Big Ten Conference superlatives you want to check out. Best quarterbacks in the Big Ten, you got to go with the Michigan Wolverines. You have Shoelace Denar Robson. This guy is a tremendous talent, very fast, and he's going to play in the offense that's going to not cater to his skill set, but he's that type of player that will adapt and will be another outstanding playmaker for the Wolverines. Best running backs in the Big Ten. It's a tie. You got to go with Michigan State. You look at the two talented tailbacks they have in Baker and also Caper and Bell. These guys can run the heck out of the football. Michigan State will lean on that running game this year. Uh, in the Big Ten, very talented, and you also have to go with the Wisconsin Badgers. These guys run the football like no one else. They run behind those big offensive lines, but these guys have two talented tailbacks that can go to distance, that has vision, that runs with inside power, and can also catch the football out of the backfield. Wisconsin and Michigan State are the best teams for running backs. Best receiving core in the Big Ten. You have to go with the Michigan Wolverines. You see right there, Junior Hemingway. This guy is 6'1", 220 pounds. Very physical, but these guys, you look at Daryl Stoneham and also Roy Rountree, each has unique skills. And what I like most about these guys is the fact that they can make plays after the catch. Very tough to defend. Best offensive line in the Big Ten, you have to go to Ohio State. The Buckeyes led by center Mike Brewster. But you also look at left tackle Mike Adams and also right tackle J.B. Shugarts. These guys do a great job up front. You see right there, plowing open holes for anybody that's back there in the backfield. Best defensive line in the Big Ten, I'm going with the Nebraska Cornhuskers. We already know Jared Crick is outstanding. He's going to be a top 10 pick in the NFL draft. But guys like Baker Steincooler and Cameron Meredith are guys you want to keep an eye on. Also, keep an eye on Thad Randall. These guys can really get after it. Best linebackers, we're going to stay out there in Lincoln, go with the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Levante David is a guy that I really like very fast and also excels in blitz packages. Best defensive backs, I'm going with the Michigan State Spartans. I like cornerback Johnny Adams and safety Trent Robinson. These guys are very talented. They know how to make plays on the ball, and they're also not afraid to stick their nose in dirty places in the run game. Best special teams unit. I'm going with the Northwestern Wildcats. I love their kickoff return and punt return of Venrick Mark, but their punter Brandon Williams is a guy that gets a lot of height on his punts and never puts his team in a bad situation. Offensive MVP. He got to go back up to Ann Arbor and give it to Denar Robinson. This guy is going to excel in that new offense. That's one thing you want to keep an eye on. How well he does, but I think he has the talent to do so.
defensive MVP. I'm going with Jarrell Worthy of Michigan State. This guy is 6'3", 305 pounds, big mammoth defensive tackle, a guy that's going to have a bright future at the next level. Freshman of the year in the Big Ten, I'm going with Braxton Miller of Ohio State. The reason why I'm picking Braxton Miller, I think he's going to start probably as a true freshman, and he has that athleticism and the passing skills and the leadership to do so for the Buckeyes. Best pro prospect we already mentioned, Jared Crick. This guy is just a talented defensive player. Old school Nebraska defensive lineman should do well at the next level. Toughest schedule in the Big Ten. I think the Michigan State Spartans have one of the toughest schedules in the country. Look at those road games at Notre Dame, Ohio State, Nebraska, Iowa, and Northwestern. And they get a home game against Wisconsin. They better be ready this season. Otherwise, it's going to be a long year for Sparty. Predictions in the Big Ten. Let's start with the Legends Division. Number six, the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Reasons for optimism is the Jean McKnight and Gary Tinsley. Those are some reasons for optimism. Cause for concern is they're very young and they have depth issues. If they can control that, they're going to be fine. What we will learn from Minnesota is that quarterback Marquise Gray is a solid QB. At number five, I have the Northwestern Wildcats. Reasons for optimism, you have to look at quarterback Dan Perza. Getting him back is going to be huge, and you have to love their secondary. These guys can really get after it. Now, cause for concern will be their running game and those linebackers. Those are two reasons why I have Northwestern where they are. But what we'll learn from the Wildcats is that they will make a push for the Big Ten title because there's still a lot of talent, enough talent, and the schedule fits that program. Now, you look at Iowa I have at number four. Reasons for optimism, very strong offensive line and a very defensive line, very veteran defensive line. You have to like that out of a Kurt Ferentz team. Cause for concern is no Stanzi and there, there's no star power on defense. Now, what we will learn from Iowa is that Iowa will still cause fits, especially at night. Don't play the Hawkeyes at night if you're anybody on that schedule. At number three, I have the Michigan Wolverines. Reasons for optimism, you have to love Shoelace and those wide receivers. They're going to score a lot of points and make a lot of big plays. And they, they've they improved their defense. That's another reason for optimism. Cause for concern is a new offensive scheme. They're going more to an eye formation and those running backs. Who's going to be the tailback? But what we will learn from Michigan is that their defense won't be a laughing stock this year. Now you look at Nebraska, I have the number two. Reasons for optimism, they're still the black shirt defense. They're going to get after the quarterback. They're going to stuff the run. And you have to like Taylor Martinez. His improvement in year two is going to be huge. Calls for concerns. Calls for concern will be the playmakers they have on the flanks. Who are the wide receivers and can they step up? And what we will learn is that Taylor Martinez will progress as a passer this season. Keep an eye on that. Number one, I have the Michigan State Spartans. Reasons for optimism is that balanced offense and defensive line and their secondary. That's the formula you need to win in the Big Ten. These guys are very balanced. I like Kirk Cousins as well. Calls for concern. Replacing Greg Jones is going to be huge. How well can they replace him at the linebacker spot? But what we will learn is that a BCS Bowl awaits the Spartans after they finish up the Big Ten Conference. Over in the leaders division, I'm going with Indiana at number six. Reasons for optimism is Trey Robinson's potential and running back Darius Willis. I like Willis a lot. Cause for concern is a secondary improvement. They were horrendous in the secondary last season. Now what we will learn is that Trey Robinson will be a star for years to come in the Big Ten Conference. At number five I have the Purdue Boilermakers. Reasons for optimism. Getting Ralph Bolden back is going to be huge and they have a lot of depth on that team top to bottom offensively and defensively. Now cause for concern is it going to be Rob Henry or Marv, who's going to play quarterback? They have to answer that question. But what we will learn from Purdue this year is that 2012 will be their breakout year in the Big Ten. At number four, I have the Penn State Nittany Lions finishing in the leaders' division. Reasons for optimism is the defensive improvement and tailback Silas Reed. This guy is outstanding. Calls for concern. They have quarterback issues and they have issues at linebacker. They have to get those solved. But what we will learn from Penn State is that Derek Moy will be an all-conference player this season for the Nittany Lions. This guy is 6'5", 210 pounds, and can catch everything with his hands. At number three, I'm going with Ohio State. Reasons for optimism for the Buckeyes. Offensive line and defensive line, they're very stout. Now, causes for concern, you look at the fact that they don't have Jim Trussell, no Terrell Pryor, all the other suspensions for the first five games. How can they overcome that? But what we will learn is that Braxton Miller makes Ohio State fans forget Terrell Pryor. 
Number two, I have the Illinois Fighting Illini. Reasons for optimism is that schedule. They have a very soft schedule and it sets up nice for those guys. And also quarterback Nathan Schilhaas. But causes for concern is the fact that they have linebacker questions. They have to really find someone to play linebacker. And what we will learn is that Schilhaas will be a Heisman Trophy candidate in 2012. Very talented playmaker for the Illini. And number one, I'm going with the Wisconsin Badgers. Reasons for optimism, you have to love their running game, and they have one of the lighter schedules in the country. They always have a good schedule that sets up well for them. Causes for concern is the passing game and the secondary. Now, they do get Russell Wilson from North Carolina State, so that could be an upgrade. But what we will learn is that linebacker Chris Borland will be back to his 2009 form. For more conference preview videos, visit footballgameplan.com slash college football or visit our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash football game plan. And listen to the football game plan radio show, which airs Saturdays, 11 a.m. Eastern time at blocktalkradio.com slash football game plan.